Hey, McCoy. You could say that. Steel is looking for you. And Bryant. You've been keeping the whole department hopping, you and Guza. I know. You looking for me too, Gaff? Looking, not killing. I'm in a good mood today. You know you got some interesting neighbors, McCoy. Yeah, well, I've been too busy to visit lately. You gonna turn yourself in? I'm thinking about it. Think hard. You killed anyone yet? It's like I said before. You retire a human, your career is over. Your life too, maybe. But we don't live forever, do we? <laughs> so I say, well, you should have voted for him then. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very funny, yes. Governor, let's get down to business. At last estimate, five billion tons of kipple surround this city. Eventually, it's going to have to be cleared away. Elgin, we've got specials to do that job. But the attrition rate is enormous. No, no. There's only one way it can be accomplished. My way. Unfortunately, your way is illegal. For the moment, yes. But laws can be changed. And if replicants were allowed to work on Earth, imagine what your legacy would be. Governor Maurice Colvig, the national hero who eliminated toxic debris. <laughs> Even your opponents will vote for you. How can you possibly guarantee that no tragedies will occur? It's a very simple solution to an old design challenge. Give them jobs on Earth, and they will never desire a different life. That is a lie. Who's there? <laughs> it's one of my children, I think, and a very resourceful one at that. Why don't you show yourself? With pleasure. Call security. Who is this man? I'd like to ask the same question. One more word from him, and he'll be dead. I will not be spoken to! You are certainly a man of your word. I want all the data you have on replicant DNA structures, the mutation studies, everything. Why don't you just take a seat? We'll have a little talk. I don't have time for talk. I wish I could help you, I really do. But the data is useless. The four-year lifespan is unalterable. My friends. My family dying before my very eyes, and all you can say is, there is no hope. Time is precious, my son, and you have been keeping yours well. And when night comes, I'll go to place fit for woe, walking along the darkened valley with silent melancholy. <laughs> If possible! Not exactly the conclusion I had in mind. Have you stationed guards in the mezzanine? Yes, sir, but... I mean... After the fall... Oh, don't be a fool. He's not dead yet. His time hasn't come. Oh, God. No. Shot. I'm so sorry. You were close to it, weren't you? Not it. Her. Maggie. Clovis didn't do it, I'm sure of that. No kidding. I also told him about us, Ray. He took it very well. He and I are finished for good this time. I have a hard time believing that. He's been very philosophical. He's aware that his time is running out. That's why he wants to help us. No hard feelings, huh? None at all. 
Okay. But there's another way. Why don't you and I just go away from here? Leave this place and everybody else behind. You got nothing to keep me here anymore, that's for sure. You got a plan? There's a used car place in the fourth sector near the arcade. I know it. Gordo and I went there before looking for a vehicle. The owner was nice to us. He'll probably help us if we pay him. We'd need a spinner to be able to get anywhere. He's got a couple for sale. It's real risky and illegal. Well, it's better than just sitting out there in the kipple waiting to die. Watching everybody else die. If you won't do it, I'll go get the car myself. I didn't say I wasn't going to do it. Then meet me there. I'll be there within the hour. China Bar. China Bar. Thank <laughs> you. 